Tonight on the docket, ready, set, go in the state of Palmetto. Congressman Ron Paul hit the Palmetto state, that would be South Carolina, very hard tonight with his message of limited government and spending cuts. But now he's adding a new issue, running ads that focus on his pro-life and family values message in an appeal to the more culturally conservative voters of South Carolina. And reminding them that Governor Romney was once to the left of Ted Kennedy on these issues. You heard it here first. Congressman Paul will finish strong in South Carolina, a state struggling with high unemployment and harboring deep cynicism of more George W. Bush-like big government from the Republicans. Make no mistake, Congressman Ron Paul did very well in last night's New Hampshire primary, winning 23 percent of the vote rather than the 17 percent that pollsters had predicted. This firmly establishes Paul's position in a two-way race with Governor Mitt Romney for the GOP nomination. As the results were coming in, I made an appearance on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. John made an observation that had me wondering whether he has become a regular viewer of Freedom Watch. Take a listen. Looking version of big government. That's why so many GOP primary voters who turn to Romney seem to do so out of resignation rather than out of passion. And that's why so many GOP primary voters and independents are now turning to Ron Paul, the only conservative running and the only passionate alternative to Mitt Romney. It is time to dispense with the tired nonsense that Ron Paul is unelectable. The same was said of another older guy from the West named Ron about a generation ago. Polls show that in a head-to-head -head matchup with President Obama, only Mitt Romney and Ron Paul are within the margin of error. After Iowa and New Hampshire, the two GOP candidates that have garnered the most votes are Mitt Romney and Ron Paul. Last night's primary makes one thing very clear. Ron Paul is the only electable alternative to Mitt Romney, and he is the only Republican who believes in small government. So, will the other candidates heed his call and drop out? So conservative voters can get a real choice between a real conservative and more of the same. For answers, we turn to political strategist Jack Berkman. Jack, it's a pleasure. Your Honor, Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you. Welcome back to the show. How did Ron Paul do so well in New Hampshire yesterday? Well, he's broadening his base of independence. First, though, that was the worst case of media bias I have seen. He's been the victim six or seven times of terrible media bias. This was the worst. Twenty-five percent, almost twenty-five, I think twenty-four point eight percent stellar performance media downplayed it. I don't think there was hardly any bias. You're I talking think, about bias today and reporting the results bias or bias in, during the campaign? Well, throughout both, but bias today mainly in reporting the results today. I think it was the worst single uh, incident of media, media bias against Ron, Ron Paul all year long, and there have been some very, very bad ones. Why, do, why did independents go with Ron Paul in Iowa and in New Hampshire. And do you think we'll see the same phenomenon next week in South Carolina? Yes, it's catching on. He's broadening his base. What, what's happening now is he started out with young people. First of all, he's the only candidate with a base. And that's really important. All of these. What do you mean, the only candidate with a base? He's Mitt the, Romney has the establishment. Well, but that's a that's a fundraising base. Ron Paul is the only guy out there with a real base of people that support him. When when in politics, political strategists talk about a base. Romney doesn't have a base. His base is fundraising. It's just kind of a of an air game. Ron Paul knocks on doors. He's got people behind him. Rick Santorum doesn't really have that. He might have a little one. Gingrich doesn't have anything. He doesn't even have an organization. All of these people have to recreate their base in every single state. Ron Paul doesn't. And the better news for him is he's surging in that he's, he's reaching deeper and deeper. It's, his base is not just kids anymore. It's soccer moms. It's independents of all kinds. Can he get the Republican nomination? Oh, yes. I think, I think he can. Uh, I think he's, he will be in it till the end. I mean, we know that much for sure. He's in it for the distance. I mean, Romney will be in it. Ron Paul will be in it. You're going to have one conservative. Gingrich and Santorum are probably battling for that third spot. One of them, and that they probably will drop away. I would predict you could have all the way to the convention floor, Ron Paul versus Mitt, and Ron Paul could very well win. I think Ron Paul, here's what he's going to do that Santorum and Gingrich have failed to do. What? He can expose the contradictions in a very lawyerly way in Romney. He can say, you were pro-choice here, now you're pro-life. You were uh, anti-gay, uh, now you're uh, pro-gay, now you're anti-gay. He has the ability to show the nation what Romney is. Santorum's failed to do that. Gingrich has failed to do that. I think Ron Paul can do that. Last question. Is there a uh, belief amongst Republicans of anybody but Obama, or is there a belief that we need to have someone who is substantially different 
from Obama. The, the latter. I think the big problem Romney would have is he just can't turn, uh, he can't turn the base on at all. And we're seeing today he's not even strong on independence. If you, uh, uh, Ron Paul really beat him with independence in New Hampshire. Romney is just all money. It's all an Air Force. Got it. So he, it's, he has neither base nor independence. Jack Berkman, a pleasure. Thanks for joining Thanks, us. Congressman Ron Paul stops in.